Hello there, this is Chris with a tutorial video for Kerbal Space Program. This is going to be the Idiot's Guide to Duna. Quite literally, I'm going to show you how to get to Duna the easiest way possible. Uh, and to make it even easier for you, I'm actually going to include all the craft files um, that I'm going to use for the ships in this, uh, this tutorial. Uh, so this is Duna. This is the first planet out from Kerbin and the fourth planet out. It is the game's equivalent to Mars, it even looks remarkably like Mars. Um, so to find it on the map, it's this uh, reddish orange circle. There's Kirby, which is the turquoise blue, pale blue, whatever you want to call it. Um, now what, to get to Duna, you have to imagine now, when you zoom out here, you have to imagine this is kind of the same as a an orbital map of the planet with these beam moons. Uh, I found the easiest way of getting to Duna is you double click on the sun to focus on it. So now we can rotate around the sun. To get the angles right, you're going to put it like this. So Duna is at the top. Imagine this is a clock. Duna's at the 12. Three will be there off at a right angle. You need to get curbing around the one o'clock mark. It needs to be 30 degrees behind. Um, but you can also see here that Duna at this point in its orbit is really close to Duna at that point in its orbit. So that means depending on where you are in the year, you're never going to be exactly this. You're always going to be somewhere around this point. So if you go in by eye like I am, I've got no mods installed. This is all by eye. This is roughly right. Roughly 30 degrees, clock on hand, one, one hour behind or Duna one hour ahead or however you want to call it. Uh, so I've pre I've done this manually um, using the um, comma and full stop keys on my keyboard to speed up time. Um, you could literally be sat here for ten minutes doing this. This is the problem. Um, even at I think a hundred thousand times speed, it takes a long time for the planets to come into alignment. Um, we're actually on day two hundred and thirty-six here. This is a brand new sandbox game so that shows you how long it takes to get into uh into the right orbit so i've actually got a spaceship previously built this is the shape i'm going to be including in my here it is this is the d5 uh, i actually have d's one through four they are all ships which are not designed to come back from doing uh, the d1 was actually one i built purely just to test my uh 30 degree line um but this is the ship, it's a pretty simple design. We have a large booster here using this, uh, is it the bear? Twin bore, and then just a big orange tank on top, a couple of solid boosters. I've actually used gigantic tail fins, that's the reason because of this gigantic nose cone um, to stop the ship from flipping around. Uh, so that's the first stage, this should get me into orbit. Second stage is only a tiny one with just a little engine. That should get me to Duna, more than enough fuel in there, I would think. And the third stage is the spaceship itself, which if I could grab that, just gonna have a quick look at it. It's uh, if you've been watching my career videos, you'll know that it is remarkably alike my moon rocket design. In fact, I've got something weird there with the fuel. Okay, that's fixed it. Um, yeah, it's a lot like my moon rocket design. The only difference is um, I've put these external tanks with legs on. Uh, these will actually jettison off uh, after taking off again, just to save a bit of weight. And hopefully these fuel tanks will probably be empty by that point. Um, and then it should all come back. They should be born enough to get me back there. So the these did not want to reconnect. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> that was a mistake. But I can fix it. Okay, and then the whole thing's inside a nose cone, so everything should be good. So we're going to put SAS on, and we're going to hold the shift key to power up to full. Um, now what we're going to do is, it, at this point we're just going to get into orbit now. So we're going to press space to fly. Uh, so what I do, this is how I normally fly. Get up to about 100 meters per second, should take not a long time at all. And then immediately and aggressively begin rolling. As you get to about 200, you're going to actually want to slow down. I'm going to power down a bit now to about a th two thirds power. Um, keep rolling. You need to be rolling quite early. 
the way the new gravity turns work hard. They literally work like proper gravity turns now. So we're going out. Once we're past about 100, 120, so we get to 120, hit X to stop. So we've only got a little bit of left fuel left in this engine. Now we are getting heat now because we're getting these little green uh, things appearing. So this is showing that we were heating just then at the last minute. But normally that would not be heat at all. So I'm going to do the second stage, which is this heat, which is the nose comb. Get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a bit closer into space. If you feel you need to, put a manoeuvre node here. But uh, most of the time you're not going to need one. You uh, you get very quickly used to uh, not needing one of those things. So we don't have a lot of fuel left in this stage. So we're just going to boost up to near the apoapsis. And we're gonna point our ship over. This could be quite difficult, depending on how many of um, these SCS modules you have on board. It could be quite difficult to do. Uh, I have no RCS fuel modules on this. This is all being done using uh, flywheels and magnets, or however it is they power them. Okay, so we're gonna use up the last bit of fuel in this ship. And it's gone. Pretty much got us exactly into orbit. So now we're just going to go the rest of the way into orbit. Doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to look good. There we go. We only had a little bit of fuel there from that stage. Okay, so we're now in orbit. This is our interplanetary stage. So now we're going to zoom out on the map. And we're going to look for Duna. There he is. Set as target. It turns green. But that's fine. So now we need to... So at this point you'll see... Oh, where is it? It's gone. <laughs> you'll see Kirby's orbit appear as a line when you... There it is. At a certain zoom. We need to be... Because we're lowering the orbit and Duna's higher. We need to increase our orbit speed. So we're orbiting this way. We're orbiting clockwise. So when we leave Duna, uh, sorry, Kerbin, we need to be flying in this direction, away from it. So that means we need to boost from about there. You can alter it on the fly as you go. You're looking at about a thousand to get you out. So there you go. So there's the line. So that's more or less right. Uh, so we're going to zoom out. And if we got our angles right, in fact, yeah, there we go. We should be really close. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just use these blue and green. Try not to touch the purple ones or the pink ones. There we go. Uh, so it's 188 days away. And in fact, we're actually going to get an encounter there. So this is so our angles are good here. Um, you can get a little bit more efficient than that, but this is what I've got. And if this rocket can do it unefficiently, then it means it can do it even better if you actually get the angles perfect. Now this stage, we only need a tiny bit of fuel left in this stage to perform what we need it to perform once we've performed this burn. So as you can see, even, even by eye, inefficient, or possibly not quite 100% efficiency, we still have plenty of fuel. So if you're not quite good enough for this or you need to make lots and lots of adjustment burns, this rocket does have enough fuel left in it. So I'm going to kill the engine and we're just going to now perform tiny burns to get this exactly right. This is the number we were watching. So it's green, but that's not perfect. 0.7, that's pretty good. Okay, so we don't have an encounter, but we do have an incredibly close approach. So what we're going to do now, oh, we're going to speed up time. Once we're about halfway there, so at this point, we're going to slow down. 
And we're going to make an adjustment burn now. So it's not sensitive now, but it will need a little bit more fuel. So now you've got to do this by eye here. What I found the best way of doing it. So if you hold your mouse over that, if you hold down the Alt key and click. Is it the Alt key and click? Nope. <laughs> now maybe it doesn't do it from the uh, the approach vectors. You can do it on the orbit, on the periapsis. Uh, you can actually lock it in place. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have to do this by... Oh, there you go. In fact, yeah. So you're just going to play with them. So, we are, so what I should be able to do now is if I hold down Alt and click, yeah, it stays in place. Uh, if you had, if it, well, my keyboard is Alt, GR, Alt, Greater. Um, if you hold down the other Alt key, you actually control your speed, <laughs> which you don't want. So that's locked in place. So now what you're going to do, you're going to adjust this. So you go one way and then the other, and you want to reduce the number. So that goes up. So we want to go this way. That goes up as well. Which means that one was pretty much right. So 25, 24. 24 is the lowest we're going to get that way. This way. This way is a good one. 7, 8. So it went up again. So you're just going to keep doing this. It'll either go up or it'll go down. Oh, there we go. That was a good one. 2. Oh, in fact, there we go. So it's a bit of trial and error, this. But at this point, you're not actually using fuel. So that's a really good one. Uh, so it's only a 37 meter second burn. A one second burn. Uh, so we can do it now. At this point, um, we're not waiting the two days. Even though it, normally you would. But when you're flying over these massive distances, it makes the littlest amount of difference. I found the best way of doing this now. Get on the target and then actually get rid of that. And then burn and watch it by eye. So you'll see it going down. Otherwise there'll be there'll be a ghost image and a real image. And it's very difficult to see the difference because they overlap each other. Before we hit the encounter, we're going to try and do this. So now you'll see there's two. This is get quite a difficult now. Quite difficult to actually click to make these numbers appear but so you can see this is the problem you have now you have a ghost image and a real image you cannot see the difference between the two so it might so sometimes it's now easier to actually do this this is another way of doing it you actually perform tiny burn so that's the wrong way you're not using a lot of fuel here. If you just just tap the shift key to bring up your engines to the tiniest amount on. Okay, and then what you do is you keep going until you see so you'll start to go down and then you'll start to go up again. No, that's the wrong way. It's it's a lot of trial and error, but we need to get this number down as low as we can possibly get it. Okay, that's not the right one. I think it was the other per the other this one. No. Um hmm. I mean this is a pretty good number what I'm at. Oh, in fact that, that shot down then, didn't it? Four, three, two, what Okay, we actually have there's no number there. That means we're actually gonna impact the surface, so that's we can't get better than that. So here is the important thing now. You need to speed up time, but you need to slow down time before you hit the encounter node. So you need to have your fingers on the uh, comma and full stop key. There we go. So now your encounter is going to look something like that. So what I found now is you want to get onto a circular orbit, preferably going in the same direction you would be going normally. So you're going to look at these little blue ones. You have normal and anti-normal. Uh, sorry, radial and anti-radial, which are the blue ones. If you put yourself on anti-radial and burn slightly, it'll flip around, but that's fine. 
and you actually bring it round. So now we need to lower it a little bit now. Oh god, I always get this wrong. It's the pink one you're looking for now. This one. It is that one, I got it right. And this will bring it round so we're flat. Doesn't use a lot of fuel this. Especially at this distance, which is why it's better to do it now. I'm just gonna keep going until it's flat. Like so. So now what I'm gonna do is zoom out. What we need to do now, this is this is the beauty of Duna. Duna has an atmosphere, which means we don't need to use engines to actually slow down. You could do this all using maneuver nodes. Um in fact I'll show you how to do this one with a maneuver node. So we're gonna to want to go this way now. If you look, it's coming in. So we're at 500, 400, 180, just disappeared. 2000. Right, we actually want this. So then it'll tell you, as it said, it just tells you to go to the blue line anyway, which is the one I was saying. We want our periapsis of Duna to be 15 kilometers above its surface. That is deep within the atmosphere, but enough to clear the mountain tops. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a cold, so uh, talking a bit with a strange voice. So 17, well, we can adjust that when we get closer. Which we shall do so now. 14.6, that'll do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quick save. F5 is quick save, F9 is quick load. These are your friends in Kerbal Space Program. Um, they are probably the two most important keys in the whole game. Quick save and quick load. You can do them at any time. The only time you cannot save is when you are flying in an atmosphere. Any other time you can quick save. So this is going to look way more terrifying than it actually is. There's Ike, the moon, and here's Duna. We're going to point retrograde. We're going to use our engine as a heat shield. Engines tend to have quite high temperature tolerances. And also the engine at this point is pretty redundant. So okay, we're in the atmosphere now. Oh, 50 kilometers will be in the atmosphere, which is now. So it changes, so we have the four times speed now. So we're burning up. We are burning up because we're entering, normally you wouldn't burn up in doing this atmosphere, but we're coming in such a high speed. It does not cause any, because the atmosphere is thin, this is all for show. This is not really causing much heat. So what hopefully should happen now is I'm not burning any fuel off and it's going to actually perform an orbital insertion. You'll see my speed's dropping. The less fuel we use at this stage, the more fuel we have at later stages. <laughs> what I found the best way of doing once we pass the periapsis, we're going to actually start to climb again. So once we pass there, that's when we'll actually use the engine to um, fix this orbit. It's coming round though, it's working. If you lower it, you'll actually come in and land on your first go, but there is a very good chance that you'll be going so fast you'll end up breaking all your parachutes off. You even need a lot of parachutes or an enormous heat shield to uh, give you the area, because this isn't really a heat shield, so this is surprisingly aerodynamic probably, compared to a big flat heat shield on the front. Here we go. So we passed the periapsis, we're actually gaining height again, but we're, uh, so we got an orbit. No fuel required, just that tiny burn at the beginning. What do we get to? 164, that's not bad. Um, so just for reasons, I'm going to try and land on the day side. <laughs> if 
fact, if I leave it how it is, we're actually going to come down in this big crater, which is probably good. The crater bases are always a good place to land because they tend to be quite flat. Landing on the, this is terribly rocky, terribly mountainous. You're never going to get a good landing. Are we uh, high enough to go back into orbit? Back in space, I should say. We can speed up time better. Yep, there we go. It's going to bring the ship around to the outside. Here we go. I think I'm going to... Yeah, this is perfect place to come down, actually. I'm not even going to adjust it. But what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to cut the video here, and I'm going to split the video into two. So for the landing and the return home, uh, join me in my next video. So I shall see you then. Goodbye.